going to walk through all these dispensations and covenants, um, but I am going to go a little deeper tonight and graduate us out of that first covenant and dispensation into the second. Uh, we're going to come out of innocence tonight and get into our next covenant and dispensation. Again, I can't promise you that I'm going to go through all seven in this succession, but God dropped something on my heart this morning. Well, he put the thought in my heart yesterday, but then he dropped a scripture on me this morning that I said, hmm, okay, well, Lord, that's me what I'm supposed to do. So um, before I get into where we're going, uh, just a small brief synopsis recap from last week when we were dealing with innocence. One of the things that uh, we ended on, mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about exposure mm -hmm. and how exposure is an enemy, if you will, to innocence. Mm -hmm. And uh, that exposure creates a comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about how that, that exposure allows there to be an actinic uh, rate released in our lives, mm -hmm. which is uh, something that produces a chemical change, mm -hmm. and that we start looking at stuff differently that's been there the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's what happens with exposure. Now, uh, one of the things oh. that I want us to grasp before I get into where we're going to go, TJ, I think you're going to like this. One of the things that I want us to grasp is exposure leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. I want us to catch this before I get to where we're going to go tonight. Exposure. I told you it was the enemy of innocence. Uh, I told you that it creates a comparison. Um, yes. uh, did I take anything else that exposure does? I don't see it, so I, don't, I just want to make sure I ain't say something that was good that I ain't have written down. Exposure reveals. Okay. Exposure reveals. That's good, because it does. Brings light to a thing, yes. Did I say anything else about exposure? To danger or attack? Yeah, that's the definition. Uh, to, to lay open to danger or to attack. Mm -hmm. That's the definition for something that is exposed. Great, great. To reveal, good. Okay, all oh, that's good. Great, great. I, I ain't trying to throw no tricks at you. Just want to make sure I ain't missing something that I need to say. So let, let's, let's, let's do it here. Exposure, uh, Sister Shell, leads to destruction. All right, uh, destruction is simply another word for sin. Exposure leads to destruction or sin. All right, exposure, all right, leads to destruction or sin. When we were identifying the first covenant that God made with Adam yes. as it relates to bringing about the dispensation of innocence, as this uh, sin had taken place mm. and that they eaten, you know, this fruit. Bible never says it was an apple. Said they ate of a fruit of the tree. Uh, and it was at that moment mm -hmm. that the Bible says that their eyes were now open. Right. Mm -hmm. And they began to see uh, differently than what they had the whole time. Mm -hmm. All right. It was their exposure that brought them to a place of realizing that they had then sinned. Mm -hmm. Let me make you let me make sure you mm -hmm. get this. Uh, and people say this all the time, it's right, but I want you to catch it tonight. They were naked the whole time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were they didn't even know what clothes were supposed to be. Right. They just were the way they look is the way it was supposed to be. But it wasn't until exposure came into their lives that something about their environment changed. Now, nothing really changed naturally, but spiritually they were able now, and even physically, they were able now to see something as offensive mm. when it wasn't offensive before exposure came. That's good, sir. All right? That's good. Uh, uh, nakedness was common. It wasn't rude. It wasn't like, oh, what are you doing? It was the norm. Right. It was life. But after exposure came, now they're saying it must be something that we did wrong that we are looking the way we were looking like right now. We must have done something because this, this can't be right. I ain't supposed to be just out here like this. That's what you're trying to tell me. What I'm trying to tell you is people don't even get offended in church yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until their stuff is exposed. Yes, sir. Right. Oh, yes, sir. Right. Go ahead. Help me here. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, when, you know, you, know you, you, you came to church for the first three years. 
you know, your pastor was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Mm -hmm. But then he started getting into the fact that you shouldn't be shacking. Mm -hmm. And when that exposure came, yes. all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute. I don't think I like Pastor Hen too much no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My stuff. He used to be my guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to want to call him all the time. <laughs> I used to want to tell him how great he was. Yeah. Now, you know, I ain't really feeling it. Well, you were sinning before I exposed you. Yeah. You loved me while you were sinning. Yeah. But it wasn't until after exposure came. That's right. That you did say, oh, wait a minute. There's something, you know, something's different. He yeah. think he deep now. Yeah. Mm. So, 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 so exposure, exposure leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so, so Adam and Eve, you know, they were naked. They, they realized they were naked. So Adam now says, all right, well, look, let's, let's do something to fix this so we can hide our sin from God. Now, this is the thing. Uh, the nakedness wasn't even the sin. I want you to catch it. Mm -hmm. The nakedness mm -hmm. wasn't the sin. The sin was what they ate. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, fast. Okay, all right. So, 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 a lot of times, the stuff that we're trying to hide from God, mm -hmm. God is really saying that's not even the sin. Right. Mm. The sin isn't what you're trying to hide from me. The sin is that you're still doing. Oh, you thank you, Bob. Wow. Like, you're still with me. The sin is what you're practicing. Yep. Not what you're trying to cover. I don't want you to miss that's it. Right. So, so you, you come to church, I, and I, I hate it. Well, no, I don't. I'm going to just say where, what I'm feeling. So, so you, you come to church, you and your boo, right? And I, I, I use this because prayer for this ain't in the room tonight. All right. so, so you and your boo, right? Uh, y'all live together. So you say, well, uh, we, we still want to come to church, right? Uh, but we don't want God to see what we're doing. <laughs> Yeah. So, so we gonna come to church, but we ain't gonna come together. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to come about 15 minutes before me, and, and then I'm gonna come about 15 minutes later. Uh, I'm gonna sit on this side, mm -hmm. you sit on that side, so that way we're covering up what we're doing, uh, so that you know we don't have to get called out by God. And God says the sin isn't what you're covering; mm -hmm. right. the sin is what you're going back to practice. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, still yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we put a band-aid over it, like Adam and Eve did, said, well, let me cover up my nakedness while I'm in the presence of God. And, you know, I'll go back to my life when God isn't around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, sees he sees it all, bro, Foster. Yeah, he you can't get around him. Right. Mm -hmm. So even though you put on your nice face when you come to church, thank you, Jesus, you put on your nice hair when you come to church, you put on your nice cologne and your nice smell good. You wear your uh, whatever you're wearing, that the, the, you know, the uh, shape things that you wear. Uh, whatever it is you're doing, you're putting it on to come to church so that God can see this perfect person. Mm -hmm. But then I'm going back when I take my hair out, uh -oh. Uh -oh. when I take my shape thing off. <laughs> Spanx, thank you for working with me, Sister Jen. When I take my Spanx off. <laughs> I take my hair out. I take my nails off. I wash off the smell good. And then I live in what it is that I'm doing. God said the sin wasn't what you covered up. The sin is what you just went back to. I think I'm talking to somebody tonight too. But the reality is this. We've got to make a determination to say, I'm going to stop getting it together to come to church. You really ought to come to church the way you're living. Mm. Yeah. So that when you leave, you can go back different. That's, That's good, right. sir. That's good. That's good, yeah. That's good teaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm coming to church like I got it all together. Now, I might come to the altar and cry because I know God touched me. But in my seat, I'm cool. God help me here. So, so he says, I, I would rather you remain naked before me in my presence then I can address what your issue is. Yeah. Instead of you trying to hide from me, and then when you show up, you show up with some stuff that ain't even really yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 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 uh, exposure leads us 
to destruction. All right, let, let, let me go. We, let, let's, let's go to the Bible. Let's look at Genesis chapter Genesis chapter 3. Let, let, me, let me finish off uh, so we can go into this next, this, this next phrase. Let me give you my title for the night. All right, that was a little bit of recap from last week. My title for the night, and I like this title, by the way. You know, God gives me some great titles. <laughs> I like this one. I, this is probably one of the ones I like the most. Black people like this too. Yes, sir. All right, the title is Conscience with the uh, colon. Uh, yeah. The introduction of my opinion. Mm. Good Conscience. The introduction of my opinion. Conscience. <laughs> the introduction of my opinion. So, Brother Graham, what Pastor Henry is going to teach us tonight is it wasn't until sin came in my life that I got an opinion. Mm -hmm. This might be preachable. <sighs> I ain't even have an opinion. Mm. outside of sin. When I was in perfection, when I was in innocence, God's opinion was my opinion. But when conscience came along, wow. I was introduced to an opinion. Mm. Mm. All right. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3. Let me show you where, where it is. All right, so we, we dealt with the Adamic, um, excuse me, the Edenic covenant uh, which was the dispensation of innocence. We dealt with that for the last couple of weeks. Now tonight we're going to translate, transfer, if you will, transition over into now the, the Adamic covenant, which is the dispensation of conscience. This is the second covenant, second dispensation, the Adamic, the covenant God made with Adam, and the dispensation is that of conscience. Conscience. This is found in Genesis chapter 3, starting at verse number 14. Genesis chapter 3, starting at verse number 14. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. The word of the Lord says this. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, or distress, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it, her seed, shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Verse 17, and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and has taken or eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For thus thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam, he's still naming stuff, called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. We'll go through 24. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim, or warring angels, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, um, so this is Bart Knight. This is where, uh, you know, I was saying last week that the intention God had for us in innocence was for us really to live forever. Mm -hmm. It was never intended, Sister Greer, nor was it even designed of God for us to ever experience death. It was intended for us to be just like him. He is an eternal being. Mm -hmm. It was our responsibility, his choice, for us to live eternally. However, when sin came and knowledge of good and evil showed up, God says, I now have to make sure that you die. Because if I let you live forever, you'll be just like Satan and be in contention with me for the rest of your life. Wow. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a seed through the woman. 
He prophesied. This is the first messianic prophecy. A messianic prophecy is a foretelling of Jesus. So in the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 3, we identify that Jesus was prophesied of, his arrival was prophesied of by God himself to say that there would be a seed that would come through the woman that would bring redemption by defeating the enemy. Hmm. All right? So it was even in the times of innocence and conscience that God introduces us to his plan to reconcile us back to him. Hmm. So the idea is that even though, and I want you to catch this, Sister Lipscomb, even though there are seven covenants and dispensations, the idea is God's intent is to make sure that each dispensation is still evident in the next dispensation. I do, I do, I do. This is going to be good teaching tonight. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I feel like I can do a real good minister's conference. I really do. I think I can help some people really get, get a clue about teaching and, and doing it the right way. The reality is, Minister Black, yes. that even though there was innocence that we were in, God says, you destroyed innocence, but I want the semblance of innocence to still be seen in consciousness. I want you to be able to still experience my presence even when you're now aware that there's a presence outside of mine. Okay. Uh, he, he says, I want you to get that because I love you, Deacon is black. Because I want to be in relationship with you, God is speaking. He says, what I want to do is, or what I have to do is kick you out. Mm -hmm. Because if you stay here, you're going to become my enemy. So I got to put you out to save your life. Wow. Somebody should have wrote that down. Yeah. Uh, because there's going to come a point in your life. Now, I, this you can call this prophetic because it's accurate. It's going to become a point in your life where you're going to literally have to kick some people out of your life to save their life. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not only to save theirs, to save yours too. You can't be buddy-buddy with everybody. Yeah. Well, Pastor, I've been knowing them since 1950. Right. Well, this is a good time for y'all to take a break. You didn't know each other for a million years. You know, get, you have a season of separation in Jesus' name. But pastor, you know, we was together ever since the war. Well, the war been over. You know, get a rest. Jesus, go sit down somewhere. We, we got to realize that sometimes our salvation came uh, by kicking us out of his presence. Okay, so, so, so. Consciousness brings about several things. And before I get into it, this is going to be good, Sister Shale, and I'm glad you I wish your husband was sitting right beside you, but uh, you need to take notes for him in Jesus' name. All right. Um, the, the thing I want us to get is there's several aspects of this Adamic covenant. All right. And I ain't going to spend a lot of time here because I got five things I got to show you in the next uh, portion of Scripture, which I probably won't get all to tonight. But let me show you this about that, that covenant. The first thing we identify is that there immediately became a known enemy to humanity. The Adamic covenant, the dispensation of, of consciousness, first introduced that man has a known or identifiable enemy. All right? The serpent, who was a type of the devil, who was a type of Satan, had been spoken in Genesis 3 that he is your enemy. You will never be a friend of the devil. No, sir. Even when you do what he wants you to do, he's still your enemy. Mm -hmm. Even when you live your life dedicated to him, he is still your enemy. Even when you're doing everything he wants you to do and he's telling you to do, he is still your enemy. So why would I ever want to support something and someone who is my known enemy. Yes. That really would be kind of dumb. I, I hate to use that word, but I don't have nothing else to say. You know this person hates you. You know this person is talking about you. You know this person is going to try to shoot you when you come. But yet you're going to say, oh, I'm going to just go because that's the Christian thing to do. Mm. The devil is the liar. That's the dumb thing to do. Mm. Okay. When I know who my enemy is, I've got an obligation and a responsibility since I know he's my enemy, not to feed into the relationship of him hating me more. Right. So I identify in consciousness that I have an identifiable enemy. That is the devil. He was cursed. So, you know, on your belly as a, as a snake, you're going to eat the dust and ground the rest of your life. Uh, however, I'm going to raise up a seed through the woman. Uh, Jesus Christ is going to come and be victorious over you. Even in Jesus gaining victory over the devil, 
the Bible says that the enemy was going to bruise his heel whilst, while Christ was going to bruise his head. Hmm. So even though Jesus was victorious over the enemy, and he was, the reality is he still did damage to the body of Jesus. Let me help us a little further. He's still doing damage to the body of Christ today. The enemy is still doing damage to the body of Christ today. The only damage that the devil should be doing in the life of the believer is the damage to our feet. Hmm. All right. Whenever he's damaging your head, that's because you allowed him. The only place that God gave him authority was to do damage to your heel. I'm, I'm going to teach. I, I, I want us to catch it. All right. The, the Bible says that, you know, it's in, it's in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Ephesians. Ephesians 6, you know, we talk about the arm of God. Ephesians 6, 6, 6 15. He says, and let your peace and let your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So if the only place, check this out, that the enemy has the ability to attack is my feet. That means the only thing that he has the ability to kind of mess with me on is my peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whenever he messes with your body, you shouldn't allow him to do that because he doesn't have authority to do that. Oh, God, mm -hmm. help me tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whenever he starts messing with your marriage, you shouldn't allow him to do that because he doesn't have authority to do that. The only thing he can do is attempt to bruise your peace. Hmm. But check out what God gives us. He says, but if you let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, you'll identify that you also have peace over what he can mess with. Hmm. Hmm. He says in Isaiah 26 and 3, you know, uh, to keep your mind in, in keep your mind stayed on him. Keep your mind, he will keep the imperfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So whenever the enemy messes in the area he's allowed to mess, God has given me a countermeasure to say that when he comes to mess with the area he was permitted, I've got the word now that can battle even what he's coming with me at. Yeah, the word. Mm -hmm. But when I let the devil meddle in places he don't belong, it's because I let him. It wasn't that he had the ability to do it. Mm -hmm. I forfeited my own power to let him rule in my home. Mm -hmm. The enemy come mess with my marriage, he ain't had no, he had no authority to do that. He did it because you let him. Wow. He comes and mess with your body. He has no authority to do that. He did it because you let him. Now, some things God's going to let you walk through. Some things are going to be sent from God for God to build your faith and to establish your faith. But when it's not a God-given thing and there's an issue going on, you've got authority to speak to him and say, wait a minute, you're trespassing in an area you're not even permitted. There, there are things, there are places even now, you know, Brother Vaughn, like you go, I remember we were looking, um, this was, I don't know, maybe, um, I don't know, five or six months ago, we were looking at this building, and uh, they had signs all on the building, Brother Foster, say, you know, no trespass. You know, uh, if, you, if you come on the property, uh, the police can't arrest you. Uh, all kind of stuff just to keep naysayers out of the property. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, if we went, you know, on the property, we were really making a determination to say that we're going to submit to whatever punishment we get because we know we're doing what the sign tells us not to do. Mm -hmm. So the enemy is the same way. The problem is we don't have enough wisdom from God to realize that when he trespasses, we got the same authority that sign said, and that's to kick him out and put him in jail. Yes. I refuse, Sister Greer, to let the devil just make a determination that he's going to run roughshod in my life this week. That I'm just going to sit there and let him beat me up all week long. Thank you, sir. That I'm just going to sit there. Oh, woe is me. Oh, Lord, I need your help. Jesus. No, start telling the devil to get behind you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only place he belongs is under your feet. That's it. So that's the only damage he can do. And that's where he's going to belong. But if I'm letting him in my mind, he's trespassing. Jesus. Get out of there, Satan. He ain't got to call your pastor to do that. Tell him yourself. Hey, you ain't welcome here. Get out in Jesus' name. And guess what? He's going to have to leave yeah. mm -hmm. because he realizes he's trespassing. Mm -hmm. But he ain't going to stop trespassing until you kick him out. Mm -hmm. All right. So mm -hmm. 
He says, you got a known enemy. All right, next thing we identify in the covenant is that there's going to be now, thank you, uh, Adam, for this, there's going to be pain in childbirth. So every woman uh, that, that, that gives birth to these big head babies should be able, while they're on the table, don't, don't beat your husband up. Don't punch him. Don't kick at the doctor. You need to be saying, Adam, I owe you a punch when I see you. <laughs> because it was in Adam's doing that God said this was going to be the punishment given to the woman. That she would now have to experience pain in childbirth. She would have to now be subject to the rulership of her husband. God help me teach tonight. Uh, it was intended, Mr. Black. This again, it's, it's been in the word the whole time, but people like to, to, to you know skip over certain things. It was intended that man and woman were supposed to be equal beings. Check this out. They're supposed to be equal beings submitted to the rulership of God. So when the woman decided that she was going to come throw a little trick in the game and have him eat this fruit, God says, well, I'm going to do something. Not only am I going to make sure that now when, when you have a child, uh, it's going to be some pain associated, but now you got the responsibility to submit to your husband. Mm -hmm. It was designed that all you had to do was submit to me. But because Teacher. you, I know I am black, because you wanted to throw a little salt in the game, and because you wanted to be influenced by the enemy, now I'm going to make it so not only are you going to be painful when you, when you have birth, but you got to be subject to your husband. Mm. Mm. On the flip side, now this, this is where I kind of get in trouble, but it's Bible. On the flip side, Mr. Black, they say, God says that and the result for the man is that he, everybody say he, he has to go to work. Yeah, <laughs> that's the word. Okay. Uh, now, when God was running the reel on the woman, I, I, I'm going to get in trouble here. Uh, when he was running the reel on the woman, <laughs> Sister Greer, he says, your punishment is going to be that you're going to have pain in childbirth and you're going to have to be subject to your husband. That was the end of the reel for the woman. Mm -hmm. When he got to the man, mm -hmm. he says, and your punishment now is that you have to go to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let me say this again. Oh, heaven. So when, heaven. Oh, heaven. we get it. Oh, oh okay. so, so, so he says heaven. to the woman, <laughs> your punishment heaven. is <laughs> when you have these babies, there's going to be pain in childbirth, yeah. and you got to be subject to your husband. Yeah. Teach him. That was it. Then he came to the man mm. and said, and your punishment, oh, sir, mm. is that now you have to go to work. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. God says, my, oh, okay, say it. My will, will, this is heavy right here. My will is that your punishment was pain in childbirth and submitting to your husband. Period. Husband, you now got to go to work because you ate when you shouldn't have eaten. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so what, what are you telling me, Pastor? What I'm saying is, God never even intended for the woman to go to work. <laughs> Teacher. Teacher. He says, the difficulty you experience in childbirth is similar to the pain he's supposed to experience by tilling this cursed ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the sweat that you gave on the delivery table mm -hmm. was payment enough Continue. for him to go sweat and Continue. make some money. Yes, sir. Continually. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's got to work for years. Mm -hmm. You got to pay him for months. That's right. <laughs> Teaching. 